Well, hello, dear fellow saints, viewers, subscribers. <clears throat> I am Louis Lopez with Swag Ministry. I started this ministry after I got saved. But I'm going to break down to you, break it down how I got saved. And what I went through to get saved, you know what I'm saying? Uh... For 48 years. I was living in sin for 48 years. 48 years of darkness and pain and sorrow and world's troubles, money troubles, women troubles, life troubles, gang life. You know what I'm saying? Um, I just uh, wasn't listening. People would ask me, hey, do you want to be Say, do you want to be affiliated? I was like, no, I, I'm not really affiliated. You know what I'm saying? Just not with Jesus, but I am affiliated. But I, in, in my in my uh, walk of life, all I knew was the streets. All I knew was what to do for myself and how to get things for myself and. I, I had hate in my heart, you know what I'm saying? A lot of hate in my heart. Because it was all about me, 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 and what I can get from you, you, you. I didn't care, uh, I didn't care nothing about anything else, just what I could get. But by, by the time I was 17 or 18, I had booked about a hundred grand. And uh, I started when I was 13. I started that life when I was 13, making money, women, had my own car. By the time I was 25, I had my own house. I had my own house and everything. I was living the high life. I had gold, jewelry, rings on every finger. You know what I'm saying? Gold watch. I could go to the club with no money in my pocket, but just based on the way I dressed and the way I looked and my bling bling, I could book ladies just like that. With no money. I didn't even have to buy no drinks because I had rep. They knew my name on the street, you know what I'm saying? But uh, they knew all about me. But um, the thing is, I just feel something empty. I had it all, but I just feel something empty in my heart. In my corazón, you know what I'm saying? In my alma. There was something missing. I just, no matter how much I got, and how much I did, I still wasn't happy. I was not happy at all. I was like, um, what's missing? I mean, there's just miss something missing. I'm like, no. And I found out that that piece of my heart that was missing was Jesus. Jesus. He's the missing piece in my heart. He was the missing piece in my heart. So I was like uh, doing what I wanted to do since I was 48, having trouble with the law, uh, running around with a gang, you know what I'm saying? And I thought I was on top of the world, you know what I'm saying? I could get anything I wanted. Say if I wanted a, a, a new car tomorrow, bada bing, bada bing, it's done. Say if I wanted a girl for every day of the week, you know what I'm saying? Like Ed O. G. That's old school. Y'all don't know nothing about that. But uh, it still, it still wasn't satisfying because that's what Satan does. That's what Satan does. He'll give you what you want, but you'll be in his hands, and he can take your life just like that. You know what I'm saying? He'll give you what you want, but you're not gonna be happy because you're gonna be full of darkness. He's going to bring troubles your way. He's going to scheme on you. You know what I'm saying? Because he wants to tear your flesh up. And uh, I realized, you know, after after Jesus found me, I realized that it was he who saved me from death six times. Six times. Death six times. You know what I'm saying? But um, I'm going to tell you how it came to be that I, I started walking with Jesus every day. Okay, so I left my uh, house one morning. It was like 
90 degrees, no wind whatsoever. It was like a really, really hot day, you know what I'm saying? So uh, I said, man, I need a change of life. I need a change of pace. I've been going through so many things and I'm still going through these things. Why is these things happening to me? You know what I'm saying? I'm tired of looking over my shoulder. You know what I'm saying? Because I had people following me around and whatnot. I had enemies. I felt like the world was against me. But uh, So I asked for Jesus that first time. I said, Jesus, I need you. Come to me, Jesus. I accept you. I want to I wanna be with you, Jesus. I don't want to live in this world anymore the way I'm living, Lord. Please change me. And all of a sudden, as soon as I finished, and that was the first time that I asked that that word Jesus came out of my mouth. That was the first time. And I felt the, I felt the wind all around me. Now, mind you, what I said earlier, there was a warm, sunny day with no wind. And I felt the wind. My hairs was pricking up. And I'm like, what is this? What's going on? And it was just a feeling of peace. So much peace. I just felt peace and serenity and calmness. And I knew that Jesus was with me that day. And I heard a voice, and it wasn't my voice, it was God himself. He said, walk. I mean, it sounded like thunder, he said, walk. And when that voice spoke, somebody down the street looked at me, and they must have heard that voice too. So I walked, and I walked. I didn't know where I was going, but I walked. He was guiding my feet, right? So I walked, and the voice said, stop. Yes, it was deep. Actually, it was deeper than that. So I stopped, and when I stopped, I was in front of a park. Actually, I was in the park. I was in the park right there. So I said, Lord, is this where you wanted me to come to? Is this what you want me? Oh, you want me to go over there and sit down on that bench? He said, no. Turn around. So I did a 180, and I turned around, and... Boom! There was the mighty Gethsemane Church, Baptist Church. And I went in that church that following Sunday because he was telling me, hey, go there. And I went there and I was, I'm a member of that church for like 15 years now. I've been going there for 15 years. I got saved at that church. I got baptized at that church. You know what I'm saying? I got baptized at that church and I felt the Holy Spirit afterwards. I felt the Holy Spirit in me. It just totally, totally changed my life around. And then I realized, hey, this is what I should have been doing a long time ago. I should have gave my life to Jesus a long time ago. And I wouldn't have got this scar here and this scar over here and 17 stitches on my head. You know what I'm saying? Because somebody tried to Actually, they didn't try, they did. They threw a big cylinder block on my head. And that's the only time I got caught slipping when I was by myself, walking by myself, because I, a, 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 um, I had a woman on my mind at the time, and I was out drinking with my friends, and I was, I said, I'm, yeah, my boy, I'm going home. I said, yeah, we're going to go with you. I said, no, 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 no. I wanted to go home because I wanted to think I just wanted to be by myself, and somebody followed me. Somebody followed me, and uh, it had to be somebody that I was associated, associating with at the, uh, at the club, you know what I'm saying? He followed me because he was probably looking at my bling bling and saw the money, because I used to have my money in a bank, in a, in, a, in a roll with a rubber band, you know what I'm saying? And I was just shh, buy drinks for everybody, psh, all my homies anyway. And so uh, he took cylinder block on my head and my head was split wide open. I woke up in the hospital and the doctor said, wow, are you still alive? I'm like, wow. He said, I should have bled out right there on the sidewalk with all them stitches they put in me. My head, I was just bleeding out. I said, um, and I thought about what he said later on. I said, 
I'm still alive because Jesus has a mission for me. God has a plan for my life. You know what I'm saying? So uh, ever since then, since when I got baptized at, at Gethsemane Baptist, I got baptized over there. I've been walking. I even wrote a book. I wrote a book about Jesus. It's on Amazon. It's called Voices of Gethsemane. Uh, Christian poems. Yeah. But uh, I just can't tell you how grateful I am and how happy I am. Grateful because God accepted me. God forgave me for all the things that I did. I've done. And I've done a lot of things. Believe that. And I've been walking in Christ ever since. You know what I'm saying? And it changed my whole life around. And now it's not about me no more. It's not about what I want. It's about what does Jesus want for me. What am I do for the kingdom today? How many people out there need to be saved, need to hear the truth? So, so I partnered up. I used to go out by myself and evangelize, but I learned the hard way. That's not a good idea because uh, I didn't have protection. Um, I didn't have nobody watching my stuff. And I had like five instances where they knocked my tripod down, phone broke, my camera broke. One guy took my speaker and threw it out on the street and there was a, like a $600 speaker. So now I don't go out by myself, but uh, I go out with my crew now, with my swag team. Swag team, yeah. I made that, that ministry, I made it. And God added, you know, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and the rest will be added. I started out with two or three people and then I went up to 20 people, then it went down to 15, then it went down to 10. Now it's like only five because they went back to the world. But I'm not ever doing that. I'm not ever gonna do that. No matter how much I feel, or I don't get discouraged, but if I do get discouraged, I'm just gonna keep my faith. I'm just gonna keep believing, keep my faith, because there's nothing that can hold me back now. I'm not ever going back to the world because I know what's in the world and I know what the world was trying to do to me. You know what I'm saying? Because the greatest, the greatest trick the greatest lie that Satan has people believing is believing that he doesn't exist. But he does. Believe me, he does. They just enjoying their sins and the lust of the flesh so much that they just don't care or they don't realize that the devil's tearing their flesh up day to day. But they gotta realize that it's only Jesus who makes a way when there seems to be no way. You heard? Anyway, that's my story. Um, a lot of you have been clicking on my videos and uh, subscribing and, say, and they're like, well, who is this guy? I don't really see him evangelizing. I want to know more about him. Well, I'm telling you, that's, that's me. That's who I am. And that's what I've been through, you know what I'm saying? And I'll be posting more stories in the future. But for now, y'all just stay strong, but mostly Stay strong in Christ, you heard me? And don't ever give up. Don't you ever give up. Because we're going to go through bad times and we're going to go through good times. And everything we have on, in this world is temporary. Temporary. But Jesus is permanent. 